Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to our program here today on spirit, faith, and family. I'd like to begin today's program with a scripture that comes to us from the 25th chapter of the Gospel of St. Ma- um, Matthew, where it says, Come, blessed of my Father's kingdom. This is the last judgment scene. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. I use that scripture to introduce today's program. We have a wonderful guest, Mother Antonio, who, an incredible woman who had eight children and when she was 50 years old, she decided she wanted to be a sister, and she lives in a prison, <laughs> uh, maximum security prison in Mexico, Tijuana, actually. It's been in the news at uh, various times. Lives in the prison. She's locked up in the prison in a cell and has an amazing witness to share with you. And with that as an introduction, Sister, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me, John. For joining us. By the way, I'm not locked up. Oh, you're not? I I lock myself up. You do? They don't lock me up. Occasionally, I've been locked just because they weren't aware I was there and put the the, the security lock on the main, where I have a little bodega where I keep things for the prisoners. And then in that last riot, I was, the lock was put down and I couldn't get out. Sister, you're 50 years old, you've got eight children, their age is now 48 to 62. Um, that's a full life in and of itself. So for 32, 33 years now, you've been doing this prison ministry. What, what motivates a mom to do something like this? It seems so radical. Well, I think that I, God bless me that I didn't limit my spirit in a certain sense. I said, whatever God calls me to, uh, I would do. I was also, I was very familiar, though we can live very well. You have a nice home, enough to eat a beautiful view of the ocean or whatever it is, or the mountains or hills, that everybody is not so blessed. And I was blessed to go with Marinol fathers and Passionist fathers and do, to Mexico and cross over the border and visit the hospitals of the, the Sisters of St. Francis and the clinics there and the prison and the jail. And I felt a special feeling when I went into the jail with a Marinol father, Father Worth. He's in China now for as many years almost as I've been in the prison. And uh, when I went into the prison for the very first time, I went into the infirmary and, I, and they opened the door. It was a cell block and the beds were there, the cots were there. And the men looked at me coming in and they stood up because they saw a woman and a priest. So they stood on their feet, even though they were trembling sick and very weak. And there were about six bunks, and they all stood up to see us. And I was very touched at how they received us. And I saw a need for medicines and other things. And I started, I always cared about people in prison because I didn't know anybody who had been in prison, but I saw the Holocaust and I saw people being taken away and locked up and and the worst kind of things happening. And in traveling with my father, and we went sometimes through, it was the South, the deep South in those days, where we'd pass a chain gang working chain, uh, you know, leg to leg and and, and chained to each other. And, And I'd always feel such a, a feeling in my heart for them. And in a movie, if there was a scene of a prison, I'd get up and walk out and sit in the uh, lobby because I was so horrified at the prison scenes. And so I always had a feeling, and then I knew I had a great love for those saints that were at had been in prison. After all, Paul, I, Paul, the prisoner, remember my chains? I, Paul, the P- Peter, in chains. And uh, it goes on and on to to uh, Auschwitz. And, and there we find uh, our great saint, uh, and various saints, but our great saint, and I'm, tr- uh, I'm looking- Maximilian Kolbe. Maximilian Kolbe, who was a great inspiration to me. And I thought, 
I don't think I'd have the courage as he did, and I don't think I would now as you go into an Auschwitz, because he really defended, he stood up for justice, and his stand for justice and mercy, the two things that Jesus called on us, to be just and merciful, that was his criticism of the Pharisees. Not that they were Pharisees, not that they kept the rules, but they, they didn't go beyond the rules and take on the two most important things, justice and mercy. And so uh, uh, he did, and he died for that. And he offered his life up, and he didn't complain. And he was a great, I think the whole world was touched by his life. Maximum Colby was a great saint, sure. and he inspired me. Sister, um, in the news recently, for instance, a year ago, there was a, a, a big riot. Terrible riot. It was all over the news. Um, yes, it was. You saw, you know, all these women on top that were screaming at others to uh, take action. And you went up and talked to them. <laughs> well, of course I did. They're my prison daughters. But out of the 500 women that were in prison at that time, or almost 500, and the women's section <coughs> is very, very wonderful compared to the men's section. Because it's a kind of a new prison we have and new rules. But the women's section, they have volleyball and they have, and they, they're not locked down. So they can leave their cells during the day. The men cannot because of 7,000 men. They can't be freed all at one time because how would you handle 7,000 men? No matter how benevolent or kind you want to be or merciful or righteous with the Lord, you just can't put 7,000 men outside of their <coughs> cell blocks every day. And so the situation for men was very hard. And the hard situation wasn't the food because it's, it's been so improved, the food and the treatment and everything, excepting the population. In a place that was meant, as you said, for 4,000, it was maybe meant for 3,000 or 2,500, and the 7,000 to 8,000. So you can imagine the cells are way overcrowded, and so the conditions are very difficult. And the first riot started on a Sunday, and they broke out the men during visiting hours, certain ones, and they burned down the things that were dearest to them, really, their school, their kitchen, their library. And not all the men, when you say the men, a riot takes place, maybe there's 200 to 300 maximum that are taking place in a riot. And there's another uh, 6,300 or 500 that are trying to get into their cells and stay there so they don't get in trouble. And so involved in it and burning down when me, there were 50 men involved in that. Uh, but 50 men angry, you know, can start a very serious riot, and they did. The most serious riot, and I've been in many riots in the prison, and I say not with any kind of pride, but with that love, love never fails. And I've never been able to fail to stop a riot when a riot started because my presence is the presence of love, of Christ's love, not my own shallow love but his love. And so this was a riot that started. I was in San Diego and came right down when I heard about it. And I was crying because I heard there were 10 people dead. Well, there were three or four that died in that riot, which was shocking because we've never had uh, uh, bloodshed in a riot. I've always called on St. Michael the Archangel to come and protect the, the prison with the wings of angels and not to let blood the, the blood flow, flow, but it did that day, and the next day we went to the hospital, and there were three or four men very close to death, and I called the priest, and he went to give the last rites to them, and it was over with. They were starting to repair and pick up. The women agitated this, I'm sorry to say, but they did. They wanted attention. They wanted, they went where they weren't supposed to go. I had talked to them in the morning and said, now let's pray together and not start a problem. But they're women that had never had much attention in their life and the women that suffered a great deal. And I love them and I love them. I was very upset with them. And I, I, you, can't, you can't say bad is good. You can't call evil good, but you can love the evil doer but you can't say the act was a good act. They agitated this entire thing that brought about the deaths of 22 more people. And that was the worst riot in the history of our prison 
or maybe of all the Mexican prisons. It was terrible. And the, and the Mexican government stepped in trying to help. The Sisters of St. Francis of Our Lady, uh, uh, of Our Lady uh, brought a thousand meals over a day. The Mexican government was ordering even pizzas and Chinese food and everything because the kitchen was burned down. So we were working day and night getting food into the, so all the men would be and women would be fed, well fed. And uh, as far as uh, you, uh, there being rotten food served, I've been there for a long time. And these, the last five years, and especially- 32 years you've 32 been there? 32 years I've been there. And I'm there between Monday and, and Saturday morning. And I leave on Saturday morning, go to the convent and spend time with my sisters. But I have the blessing of having Sister Madre Maria del Carmen, Sister, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, she's one too, but Madre Ana Maria, a Mexican sister who was provincial of Our Lady of Charity for 26 years has been assigned to my order to help me. I asked for her. So she's there all the time for the last four years. And so I had that spiritual fire coming, guiding my sisters into the spirituality of St. John Hughes and of Jesus Christ and His Holy Mother. And, and who is St. John Hughes? St. John Hughes was a great saint of the 16th century uh, that was, uh, I guess that was 1600, 17th century, that was much like, uh, like St. Vincent de Paul. He lived at the same time and his charisma was mercy. He, or, he was the founder of the Congregation of Jesus and Mary of Priests. He was the founder of the Sisters of the Good Shepherd and the Sisters of Our Lady of Charity and several other. Uh, but his whole charisma was mercy, mercy, mercy. And so he served, the sisters served the prostitutes on the street that had, didn't have any place to go, abuse women, and we do too, and they still do. And you picked him as a, as a patron of what you're doing. Yes, they are, it is. We come from the tree, this tree, it's a mighty tree. And we're a new small branch on the mighty tree of St. John Newt's, 400 years of his uh, communities serving. And we're a small branch on a mighty tree. And that's the reason that the Archbishop received us the way he did, because we come from the Utis family. That's wonderful. We're from them.